Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to Tomorrow. My name is Space Mike and today I want to talk about one of my favorite spacecraft, the Dream Chaser space plane. And oh my goodness, Sierra Nevada is progressing very well. They're still chasing the dream and things couldn't be better for them. Well, I mean, I'm sure that they could be better for them, but considering how things went for them over the past couple of years, I'm very happy with their progress. So let's talk about the progress that they've made recently. This is your space pod for August 17th, 2016. So the space system side of Sierra Nevada Corporation has been developing the Dream Chaser space plane for a couple of years now. And I won't go into the full history of how it eventually ended up in Sierra Nevada's hands. It actually started in a different company first. But they've been working on this Dream Chaser space plane under the commercial crew program that NASA's been doing. And unfortunately, their progress under that program stopped when they were not selected for the most recent phase, which is the CCT cap, or Commercial Crew Transportation capability contract and the prior round of the commercial crew program was the CCI cap commercial crew integrated capability contract and with Sierra Nevada they actually have one more milestone left under the CCI cap program and that is to complete the full duration glide test and have a safe landing of their space plane. They originally did a test of the Dream Chaser space plane and, and proved that the vehicle could fly. Although it was only a glider, it wasn't actually you know using any engines, it flew very well and it was able to slow down and pitch and be able to come into the runway at a very nice angle. Unfortunately, one of the landing legs, or rather landing gear, did not deploy. And unfortunately, in the video that Sierra Nevada provided, they faded to black right before it crashed. But apparently, there wasn't a whole lot of damage with it, and they were able to repair that damage. Not only were they able to repair the vehicle, but they did several upgrades to the vehicle as well, so that they would be able to use the same vehicle, although it was originally designed for crew, and use that for all of the different systems and data that they need to prove in order to fulfill their commercial cargo contract. And since Sierra Nevada has been chosen to be part of the CRS-2 contract, they've shifted all of their focus towards that and have started reaching out to other companies and subcontractors to fulfill the requirements needed in order to make the Dream Chaser space plane a cargo vehicle. And with this, I mean, they're going to have this service module that will hold a lot of the cargo, but still having a space plane that can land at almost any runway could have so many potential possibilities. And with that, Sierra Nevada is trying to push those possibilities as far as they can. They've teamed up with several other international space agencies around the world who want to use their Dream Chaser space plane. Originally, when they made these deals, it was in the hopes that it would be sending up crews for some of these nations. But now that they've switched focus over towards this cargo vehicle version of the space plane, they are looking at several different capabilities, mostly having scientific experiments and, and hosted payloads along with the Dream Chaser when it goes on cargo flights. And the way that the vehicle is designed, it could also go on free flights or going around in orbit around the Earth where it's not connected to the International Space Station and do several experiments on the vehicle before it re-enters the atmosphere and lands at a runway somewhere. So, since Sierra Nevada has completed the repairs and the upgrades on their engineering test article, which they're now calling the flight test article, they're going to attempt one more drop test and do a landing, a successful landing, hopefully this time, of the Dream Chaser. Last time they did the test at Edwards Air Force Base, and this time they're going to attempt it at NASA's Dryden Flight Research Center. And right now they're aiming for a December time frame for when they want to accomplish that test. And they might even ship the vehicle over to NASA to Dryden as soon as this month. So I'm very excited about that progress and I hope that it goes off successfully and they're able to land successfully this time with all of the landing gear deploying. Because for, of the reasons that I just explained, because they're switching over to this whole cargo vehicle version, all of that data is still extremely useful because they want to be able to land this space plane and have bring back the most sensitive experiments in a timely manner. That's why NASA likes this space plane so much 
Production has continued to work with them even though it wasn't selected for the commercial crew program and has been able to sign up for the commercial cargo program. And they're going to get at least six flights of delivering cargo to the International Space Station. So I'm very excited about that. And under the commercial cargo program, CRS-2, they've already completed two milestones for that program. That's awesome. So these two milestones that Sierra Nevada has completed so far for the CRS-2 contract is what's called integrated certification milestones. And what that means is essentially a lot of paperwork, a lot of paperwork. NASA and Sierra Nevada had to sit down and go over all the designs of the vehicle, how they're going to develop it, how they're going to manufacture it, test and evaluate the vehicle, and all of the schedules that would be involved with that in order to meet all of the requirements and demands that NASA has. All of the companies that have participated in the commercial crew and cargo programs have had to go over this process time and time again before they could even start bending metal. And that might not apply for the test articles. They got to build, you know, some stuff to do a lot of the testing and refine the design. And even the design of the Dream Chaser itself has changed, although subtly, over the years. And definitely it's a big change moving over to this cargo version. But with the first milestone with this, they completed this integration certification milestone. And just six weeks later, they did a follow-up integration certification milestone and were able to show the progress to NASA of what they were able to do and what sort of changes might be needed. What are those changes? I don't know. Unfortunately, NASA and the companies that are involved with the commercial cargo program aren't being as open with their information as they used to. And I'm a little mad about that and a little mad that I don't have uh, more information about what some of these milestones are, how much money they're going to be getting for them. But I mean, it sounds like progress is being made. And the more milestones that they complete, the more they'll be able to move forward and actually start building the vehicle and be able to launch in their expected time frame. They're hoping for somewhere in late 2019 or early 2020. And <laughs> they're going to need to if they hope to get six cargo missions delivered to the International Space Station before its 2024 death sentence. So. I'm really rooting for him. Something else that has me excited for the potential this company might have is back in June they signed an agreement with the United Nations Office of Outer Space Affairs, or UNUSA. And what that agreement is, is a pretty much reaching out to developing nations that don't have spaceflight capabilities and offering them space on the vehicle to fly experiments. And I'm sure there would be a price for that, but a lot of the legal framework in order to do something like that is a stepping stone that a lot of these nations aren't able to get past. So having the United Nations on their side and reaching out to these nations will, I think, help this company a lot and m might allow us to see a lot more missions with the Dream Chaser space plane than just those six cargo missions that are scheduled to fly to the International Space Station. I really hope that they use this vehicle on private space stations, maybe some Bigelow space stations if they ever get launched, and hopefully develop into the crew vehicle that they originally intended to have. But in any case, we're just going to have to wait and see what they accomplish next or which milestones they accomplish next for the CRS-2 program. And I'm really looking forward to this final drop and landing test. Hopefully it's a successful landing this time. Hopefully in December too. I hope that doesn't get pushed back. It would be great if it happened even earlier than that. but. Probably not. In any case, tell me what you guys think about this. Do you think that if, let's say, best case scenario and everything goes off well and they're able to do the six missions to the International Space Station and maybe even some science missions for other nations, do you think that they will try to move forward and actually make it into a crew vehicle like they originally intended? Or will we only see this fly as a cargo vehicle a handful of times and then be retired just like the original space shuttle. Tell me what you guys think about this. After that, you should connect with us on our social medias as well, our Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, website, or better yet, all of them, so that you can join in the conversation with us and appreciate all this space geekery we love so much. And of course, this being a crowdfunded show, I can't end the video without thanking all of our wonderful, helpful, generous, amazing patrons. Without you guys, we would not be able to make this show, and I am extremely grateful to every single one of you. Every single penny helps to be able to produce this show. And if you're not already, if you would like to help support the show, please visit patreon.com spacepod for more information and to sign up at whatever level you feel is fair. 
Thank you for watching this video. My name is Michael Clark. Keep chasing the dream, everybody. Be like Sierra Nevada. Keep moving onwards and upwards, and I will see you in the future.